Hey everyone, hope you're having a good day so far today. So, this December we're gonna find out the final fate of Kylo Ren, the former Ben Solo, son of Leia and Han Solo. Will he die as an agent of the dark side, or be redeemed just like his grandfather before him? Or, perhaps, his fate will be something in between, as it was with the Solo's son in Legends, Jason Solo. The war with the invading extragalactic species, the Yuuzhan Vong, that tore the galaxy apart, resulting in trillions of deaths, the collapse of the New Republic, and brought the New Jedi Order to the brink of defeat, came to an end because of the heroic actions of a Jedi Knight named Jason Solo. This was the son of Han Solo and Leia Organa Solo. Jason defeated the leadership of the Vong in single combat, but also found a way of ending the war without genocide, restoring peace to the galaxy. There is no question that the hero of the Yuuzhan Vong war was Jason Solo, but it came at a price that wasn't immediately apparent. He had lost so much in the war, allies, friends, even family members like Chewbacca and his younger brother, Anakin Solo. That's right, his younger brother was named Anakin Solo, how cool is that? However, he had also been a captive of the Yuuzhan Vong, who placed him in a rack-like device used to restraint their prisoners. This was called the Embrace of Pain. It continuously stimulated the pain receptors in the brain of its victim for a year. What brought him through the unending torture was the teachings and philosophy of a Jedi from the Old Republic named Vergeer, who had lived among the invaders for 50 years. She instructed Jason in how to numb the pain and control it, which allowed him to survive his ordeal. Eventually, the Jedi Knight escaped their clutches, thanks to Vergeer sacrificing herself to save him, and went on to win the war. After which, he decided to further study the Force, as practiced by the various different Force sects throughout the galaxy. His journey lasted five years before he returned home to his family, having mastered many unusual abilities within the Force. During his long journey, he had begun to have visions of a dark man sitting on a throne, casting the galaxy once again into war and suffering. Jason became determined to prevent this dark future from happening. Now, before before the Yuuzhan Vong War, Jason had been a very empathetic person, with an innate ability to communicate with animals. But gradually, through the years since, he began to feel more distant from the other beings in the galaxy, accepting death as inevitable and not necessarily as tragic as those who had died would become one with the Force, Jedi or not. And therefore, as no one was ever truly gone, death wasn't an end, but a sort of counterbalance to life. Though this did not make him want to cause anyone to die unnecessarily, it did mean he was willing and felt no guilt about sacrificing the few to save the many. And to prevent the dark man from sitting on the throne, he was willing to destroy thousands, even millions, so that trillions could live in peace. When he returned, tensions between the government that had replaced the New Republic called the Galactic Alliance and the homeworld of his father, Han Solo, Corellia, was getting heated. Corellia wanted independence and was actually one of five worlds that had joined together to achieve that. But Galactic Alliance was still young and couldn't afford to lose any member planets for fear of losing stability. So they had arranged a meeting to see if there could be a peaceful solution to the issues. However, at some point during negotiations, the Prime Minister representing the Five Worlds was killed in a terrorist attack, throwing the situation into even more turmoil. It was discovered that one of the perpetrators had been a captain, who was part of the security team and after the killing, had apparently walked out an airlock. So. Jason, along with his apprentice Ben Skywalker, the son of Luke Skywalker, that's right, his son was named Ben, whereas in the movies, the son of Leia and Han is named Ben. Now, Ben Skywalker was sent to find out what happened. Their investigation eventually leads them to the planet Lord, where they encountered a woman named Brishna Sayo, who was a force sensitive. She claimed that she had observed but not participated in the attack. She insisted that she could reveal everything if they would follow her to her home. Though suspicious, Jason, Ben, and another Jedi named Nelani Din went to Sayo to her residence, which was a habitat on a larger asteroid. Once inside, Jason could sense the dark side throughout her dwelling. Sayo explained that the asteroid had once been the home of a Sith Lord named Darth Vectivus, who according to her, had not been corrupted by the dark side. In fact, he had done no evil in his lifetime. Jason was intrigued by such a notion, 
to use the dark side of the Force, but not be dominated by evil? Was such a thing even possible? As they descended further into the lower caves, Sayo used the Force to eject Ben and Din, so she could be alone with Jason. This was where she admitted to Jason that her real name was Lumia, the self-titled Dark Lady of the Sith, a former Dark Side apprentice to none other than Jason's grandfather. Darth Vader. She had been an Imperial spy with the Rebel ranks during the Galactic Civil War, and even had a flirtatious relationship with a younger Luke Skywalker. And also, after the destruction of the second Death Star, she had battled Luke and Leia on several occasions. Lumia was particularly talented in Dark Side Illusions, a power she had used to control people like the security captain, making him walk out of an airlock. She explained that she had lured Jason here to turn the Jedi Knight to the Dark Side and make him a detached Sith like Vectivus, uncorrupted by the dark side, using its power instead to heal and bring peace to the galaxy. At that point, having recovered from Lumia's attack, Din arrived. She had overheard what the Dark Lady of the Sith was attempting, and immediately argued against the absurdity of it. That's when Lumia revealed to Jason that his Sith training had already begun, years ago, in the Embrace of Pain. Vergir had been a Sith apprentice to Darth Sidious, but rejected the Dark Lord because of his corrupt and destructive nature. Sidious's character was his downfall, but Jason could be a wise and just Sith. Din was fed up with her argument and concerned that her words were reaching Jason, insisting that they arrest Lumia. Jason felt confused with what he should do at this moment. He sought out the future possibilities through the Force. What he saw horrified him. A galaxy continuing into war and himself, fighting Luke Skywalker and actually killing him. But only if Din was allowed to arrest Lumia. Even in the futures where he managed to convince Din to let Lumia go, she would eventually tell the Jedi, and again, Jason saw himself killing his uncle, Luke. The only futures where Luke survived were the ones where Din died on the asteroid. Reasoning Luke must live for the greater good, Jason killed Din. With that killing blow, his Sith apprenticeship under Lumia began. Jason recovered Ben, who was unconscious in the tunnels, and then used the Force to alter the young apprentice's memories. Now when Ben woke up, he would believe that Jason found a dark Jedi within the asteroid, who killed Din and Sayo before Jason was able to cut him down. He also altered the shuttle's logs, marking it as a different asteroid belt. So before he took off for Coruscant, Lumia explained to him that the path he was on now was one of sacrifice and pain. To achieve the power in the dark side, he needed to bring peace to the galaxy. He would have to experience loss and eventually give up that which he cared for. It was the only way to become a true Sith Lord. Jason had a secret daughter, Alana, with the ruler of the Hapes system, the Jedi Knight and Queen Mother, Tanel Kajo. Losing them was his greatest fear. More and more worlds joined with Corellia, and the conflict between those worlds and the Galactic Alliance would eventually escalate to the point that all-out war resulted. The war would become known as the Second Galactic Civil War. The whole story of Jason Solo's fall is too long to get into the weeds with, but he would arrange to have himself put in charge of a new anti-terrorist security force called the Galactic Alliance Guard that was tasked with maintaining security and protection on Coruscant and the Galactic Alliance. Gradually, due to Jason's manipulations, the security force began to function more as a secret police force, arresting and imprisoning anyone deemed a political dissident. And when Omas, the chief of state of the Galactic Alliance, planned on removing Jason from his position, possibly by an assassination, as part of a negotiation deal with Corellia, Jason, who had secretly bugged the Alliance head of state's office, recorded their conspirational conversation. He sent his apprentice, Ben Skywalker, to kill the leader of Corellia. Jason had been sending Ben on more missions designed to turn the young man to the dark side. Making sure the recording of their conversation was found on the Corellian, he finally had his excuse to arrest and remove Omas. Then he and his close ally, the Mon Calamari Admiral, Cha Niathal, became co-chiefs of state of the entire Galactic Alliance. Now this was due to a legal maneuver that Jason had arranged into law unnoticed through the broad powers that he had as the leader of the Galactic Alliance Guard. He would lead a blockade over Corellia, attempt to kill his parents, and eventually, when his aunt, the wife of Luke Skywalker, Mara Jade, discovered that he had joined the Sith, they would duel. Though barely managing to survive, he would kill her, initially believing and hoping that she was the sacrifice he needed to make. 
but he didn't feel the change that was supposed to happen when he finally became a Sith Lord. Regardless, Lumia, in order to protect Jason's secret, would take the blame for the kill. Luke would hunt her down. She knew she didn't stand a chance against him, but this was her sacrifice for Jason. And as she suspected, their duel ended with Luke decapitating her in revenge. But Luke's son began to suspect Jason, who was on his Alliance Star Destroyer, when he finally felt a shift within himself. A new power, Battle Meditation, which allowed him to boost the morale, stamina, and overall fighting prowess of the forces under his command. He then turned and looked into the mirror and saw his eyes had turned Sith Yellow. It wasn't his parents, nor Tanel Kajo, not his daughter either, or Mara Jade. No, the sacrifice was the love of his apprentice, Ben Skywalker. The dark side called out to him by his new name, Darth Cadus, the first Dark Lord of the Sith to exist since the death of Sidious on the second Death Star. The war carried on and Darth Cadus had to seek out a new apprentice other than Ben Skywalker, believing he could no longer win the boy over. But not only did this apprentice need to be strong in the Force, Cadus also wanted someone who could spy on the Jedi Order from within. Cadus needed to know what their investigation into Mara Jade's death revealed. So, he began to groom the Jedi, Tahiri Vela, the great love of his dead brother, Anakin Solo. He used a technique in the Force he had learned on his five-year journey, setting the Force, with other Force-sensitive groups called Flow Walk. This allowed one to travel back through time, but not to interact or change anything. He didn't let Tahiri know that. Instead, he took her to the moment of Anakin Solo's great sacrifice in the Yuuzhan Vong War. Seeing the boy she had loved so much, Tahiri pushed her younger self into Anakin's arms. Now, originally she had refused to kiss him until he came back, but he never did. So this time they kissed. What Tahiri didn't realize was that the kiss was just in her mind. The past hadn't been altered. She became addicted to the flow walks and Cadus' promises of changing Anakin's fate, and so he had a new Sith apprentice. Ben Skywalker continued to work with Cadus in the Galactic Alliance Guard, pretending to still be devoted to him, which the Dark Lord saw right through, but he decided to play along as he hoped Ben would try to kill him. Even though he had secured a new apprentice in Tahiri, he still held on to the hope that he could turn Ben to the dark side as he would make for a far more powerful Sith. When he couldn't, Cadus declined to take him back in his trust. It was only when Ben revealed his contempt for Cadus and told him the Jedi had gone to Kashyyyk to unite the Wookiees against his regime, that he once again saw the promise in Ben to join him as a Sith. Cadus then went to the Wookiee homeworld and demanded they hand over the Jedi, who were now declared traitors. When they refused, he began bombarding the planet, which angered Ben. It angered him so much that he attacked to kill, but Cadus, being a master of the Force, was able to stop young Skywalker. They imprisoned him in a secret cabin where he had installed a Yuuzhan Vong Embrace of Pain. Cadus blocked Ben's access to the Force and began to torture the boy, as that was the first step towards becoming a Sith like him. The Jedi and the Bothans came to the Wookiees' aid, and a great space battle took place. While Luke, who had faked his death and concealed his presence in the Force, only allowing Ben to feel that he was still alive, secretly boarded Cadus' ship, finding his son in agony within the embrace of pain, with Cadus right next to him. The Grand Master ignited his lightsaber and engaged the Dark Lord with the intention of killing his nephew. See, this is the time when I think Luke really should have been killing his nephew, but I think it was a little bit too early to tell in The Last Jedi. I think there was still some hope. I mean, if Rey sees the hope, then Luke should have seen it too. But uh, I digress. Back to the story. Though Luke was the stronger of the two, Cadus was the most powerful opponent he had engaged with since Darth Vader. So, the battle was brutal and ferocious, with both injuring each other severely, before Ben was able to free himself and stab Cadus in the back with a vibroblade. Wanting to strike the killing blow, Luke stopped his son and took them both out of there, as he feared that Ben and himself would fall to the dark side if they struck down the Dark Lord in hate and anger. Luke was already struggling with how he had dealt with Lumia. Cadus felt more powerful than ever, even as he had wounds that would have killed a regular human or even any Jedi, but his year in the embrace of pain had made him able to endure injury like no other. And he was now one of the very few beings in the galaxy that had fought the great Luke Skywalker and walked away. That's when the Hapes fleet joined the fight. Cadus believed that his love, the Queen Mother Tanel Kajo, was there to aid him in his fight against the Wookiees and the Bothans. But she could not stand by the atrocities he was committing on Kashyyyk, 
and so she ordered her fleet to fire on the man she loved instead. Using his battle meditation, he managed to escape, though barely and with great losses. So, sometime later, feeling betrayed and needing to neutralize her, Cadus kidnapped their daughter as a bargaining chip, but it was a bluff. And as far as he had fallen, the one being in the galaxy that he cared for the most of all was his daughter, but the strategy worked. The Queen Mother wasn't sure what he was capable of anymore, so she removed the hapes from the war. Eventually, the Jedi would lead two different strike teams against Cadus on his flagship, and while he was engaged in yet another duel with Ben and Luke, the other team would retrieve his daughter before he could stop them. But Cadus convinced the moths of the Imperial Remnant to join the fight, promising them a few planetary systems that had once belonged to the old Empire if they would unite their forces with the Galactic Alliance. They agreed. However, when Cadus learned they had developed a nano-killer that would target the Hapes Queen Mother, the Dark Lord was concerned that the same weapon would endanger his daughter and went to stop them from launching the weapon. But when he opened the door, he was instantly stabbed in the abdomen by none other than his twin sister, Jania Solo. Now she had trained with Boba Fett to fight in a pattern Cadus was unfamiliar with. The two dueled, and she was just as strong in the Force as he was, though not a master like him. However, the Dark Lord was already severely wounded from numerous other encounters, including having a disabled foot and missing an arm from the last time he encountered his sister, who during that battle had had her power amplified through the Force by Luke Skywalker. Now the two fought, evenly matched. But Cadus knew his daughter had very little time before the nano weapon would strike. He tried to convince his sister to stop, and help him save her, but she didn't believe him. Jaina's attack and slashing was so powerful and effective that it would be impossible for Cadus to have any hope of keeping up a defense. She had him, though he did see an opening in his sister's attack that could allow him to take her down with him, but he refused to do so, as it would serve no purpose other than revenge. Plus, he was running out of time to save his daughter. So, the Dark Lord of the Sith deactivated his lightsaber and used his last moments to warn both the Queen Mother and his daughter about the danger. At this same instant, the twin bond that had been lost long ago returned just as Jaina made the final strike. Realizing he had been speaking the truth and holding her dead brother in her arms, Jaina was convinced that at the last moment, the persona of Jason Solo had beat Darth Cadus, much like how Anakin defeated Vader. Jason Solo's final warning to the Queen Mother allowed her to save both their daughter and herself, though the survival of their daughter was kept a secret because of complicated internal politics of the Hapan system. There were many rivals of the Queen that would want to eliminate the heir to her throne, so as far as the public was concerned, the young girl had been killed by the Nano Killer attack. For her safety, and because they had lost two of their children within a decade, she was given to her grandparents, Han and Leia Solo, to raise as their adopted war orphan daughter, going under the name Amelia Solo. Though Darth Cadus' forces lost the Second Galactic Civil War, and Ben Skywalker would go to redeem Tahiri Vela, Darth Cadus was able to bring a type of peace to the galaxy. His actions had united the various warring factions against him, and after his death, both sides made a peace settlement. Shortly before his final duel with his sister, Cadus had received a vision of his daughter as an adult, sitting on a white throne, surrounded by friends. His daughter would become a Jedi Queen, administering over a secure and just galaxy. The future with the Dark Man on the throne seemed to have been averted, though perhaps it wasn't completely, as one day the Dark Man, who was the Dark Lord of the One Sith Order, called Darth Krait, would become Emperor, decades after the death of Luke Skywalker. But he would eventually be defeated by a descendant of Luke's, so eh, it's kind of all good. I hope you enjoyed this long Legends video of Darth Cadus, the original Kylo Ren. Pretty much what Kylo Ren is based off of, but you know, with some tweaks. I wonder what we'll get in Episode 9. Maybe in the end, Kylo will die and be redeemed, if he's going to follow this kind of arc, but you never really know. Please leave a like on this Legends video if you enjoyed it. I really hope you did, and I'd love to cover more stuff like this. Let me know what you'd like me to cover in the comments below. Have an awesome rest of your day, and as always, remember, the Force will be with you. Always. Now, fulfill your destiny.